Well this video is a bit past overdue. I know when I first started the channel I had a bunch of video ideas and one of them was NASCAR busts. Unfortunately there's a few that we have to rectify. People's opinions change all the time and in the case of Steve Park my opinion of him has changed drastically. Steve Park made a name for himself racing in NASCAR Modifieds back in the day. His time in the Modified series lasted just over 14 seasons where he accumulated 16 wins and 23 pole positions and was so impressive that he caught the attention of Dale Earnhardt. And the funny backstory to that was he thought that his friends were prank calling him when in fact it was the actual Intimidator inquiring about joining his Bush Series team. Steve Park's first race for DEI took place at Charlotte in 1996. Once the 1997 season rolled around, he was in the AC Delco number no. three. With the help of Tony Urey Sr. as his crew chief, Park accumulated three wins, 12 top fives, and 20 top tens, and a third place points finish in his rookie season. Park was in the right place at the right time because DEI also had aspirations to go Cup Series racing. In 1997, Steve Park also made five Winston Cup Series starts, where his debut took place at Watkins Glen. He was running inside the top 10 at one point before getting stuck in the sand pit. He also DNQ'd in four races, but you have to remember, this is a team getting ready for their first full-time Winston Cup season. And it's not like it was going to get any easier moving forward, but there was a lot of potential and buzz surrounding this team at the time. 1998 was the year the iconic number one Pennzoil Chevy made its debut. The first three races were an absolute disaster. The Daytona 500 saw the team finish 41st after ignition problems did them in at DNF the following week at Rockingham and DNQing for the following race at Las Vegas. But the worst was yet to come. Steve Park would lose out on competing for the Rookie of the Year title after this incident. My rookie year, punctured a tire, it's in the car, hard into the wall. And I ended up with a broken leg, fractured clavicle, just numerous injuries. He is out of the car, on the stretcher, he is conscious, and they are going to load him into the ambulance. With Steve Park sitting on the sidelines for a few months, Darrell Waltrip was brought in to help steer the team in a much more successful trajectory. He was the perfect replacement driver the team needed at the time, and Darrell Waltrip needed a bit of a career revival for himself as well. So although Park's growth was already stunted early on by injury, the team never stopped developing, and by the summer, Park came back, and they had slightly improved, but 1999 would end up seeing wholesale changes. For all of 1998 and the first 11 races of 1999, the team had yet to score a single top 10 with Park. With that brought changes on top of the pit box, out with Felipe Lopez and in with a former Winston Cup Series champion in Paul Andrews. This is the guy who helped Alan Kowicki secure his only Winston Cup title in 1992. Their first race working together was going to be the 1999 Coca-Cola 600 and immediately the tables were beginning to turn. Steve Park was absolutely dominant throughout the first half of that race. You have to remember this was the very same same race, Dale Earnhardt Jr. made his Winston Cup Series debut for DEI, so even though he was getting all the attention, Steve Park knew he had to step it up, and so he did. The first half of the Coca-Cola 600 saw Park lead a total of 84 laps and was consistently inside the top five throughout the race. Him and Jeff Burden seemed like they were going to be duking it out for the lead the rest of the night, but once again, the trend of bad luck would continue. Well, he sure just, whoa! Steve Park slams the wall and comes down into the trioval area right under the flag stand. Okay, that picture tells the story right there. You can see the pit crewman. They just, wow. His, his spotter on the roof looking down at the destroyed. Yeah, I'm all right. Steve Park, number one. Although they notched yet another DNF, immediately under new leadership, they showed they had immediate promise. For the rest of 99, Park scored a total of five top 10 finishes, but 2000 would statistically be Steve Park's best season in the Cup Series. He came back to Charlotte and won the All-Star Open, but at the track he made his Winston Cup Series debut at, he would notch his very first Cup Series victory. The future was looking absolutely bright. One win, six top fives, 13 top tens, two poles, 
and just missing out on the top 10 in points with an 11th place finish. Despite the tragic loss of his boss, Dale Sr., Steve Park and the one Pennzoil team put the entire organization on their backs. The second and what would turn out to be the final win of Steve Park's Winston Cup career came at Rockingham just one week after the tragic passing of Dale Sr. Even though this would turn out to be Steve Park's most iconic moment in NASCAR, what many people forget is how good he was in 2001. At one point, Park was as high as fifth in the Winston Cup Series standings with three runner-up place finishes at Darlington, Texas, and Dover. But once the summertime hit, they were really inconsistent and at one point were as low as 13th in the standings. By the end of the summertime, they were able to notch their way back inside the top 10. Unfortunately, this was going to be his peak. Nobody could have anticipated what was about to happen the following week at Darlington. Oh, oh Park got hit. Oh, man. Who's the yellow car behind Park? Bad timing. Is that Dan Partis? Looks like no, no, he Park just, just spun. He just, he just lost it. Either something obviously had to break on that car or or something for the car to turn left that hard. He didn't just lose it at that speed. Oh, that's crazy. It's almost like an axle was broke or something for the car to turn like that. Oh, man. yeah, you see the skid mark right there? This type of bad luck is absolutely unheard of. This was a track where he was probably going to compete for the win in the Southern 500. But what ended up happening was a career-altering injury. All because his steering wheel mysteriously came off during the caution laps. The entire freak incident left him with a severe brain injury and changed the trajectory of his once promising career. He made his return in March of 2002, but it was apparent right away that he was not the same and it was not even close. It was right back to square one. All of that potential built up the past three seasons was gone within just one, to no fault of his own. By early 2003, it was apparent he was not going to improve, and his time at DEI was long overdue. Just 11 races into 2003, he made the switch to Richard Childress Racing with just a slight improvement. Although he notched two poles, he only notched three top tens in all of 2003. It seemed like the speed never left him, but unfortunately the consistency was what got him. He was involved in a ton of spins and a ton of wrecks in that two year span. After 2003, Steve Park would never race full time in the NASCAR Cup Series ever again. The most success in NASCAR he found after that stint took place in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, where from 2004 to 2005, he raced full time, scoring a win in 14 top 10s in just two seasons. But it was really weird because you knew this guy had a ton of potential and should still be competing for wins in the Cup Series. And that's just Steve Park's career in a nutshell, just straight up bad luck and injuries. Now at this point in the video, you're probably asking, Darian, why did you change your opinion from three years ago? It's simple. Sports and motorsports are two totally different things. What I mean by that is when a high draft pick, let's say in football or basketball, suddenly just gets hurt consistently and their potential just withers away, they're immediately labeled a bust. Now whether you find that fair or not, that's up to you. But in the case of motorsports, these drivers are at a much higher risk of death compared to basketball or football. And in the case of Steve Park, you had not just one freak accident, but two two career altering accidents in the span of four seasons. That is absolutely unheard of. To label him as a NASCAR bust is completely unfair. And I am willing to say that, yeah, I was absolutely dumb to make that video three years ago. Race car drivers are already taking a giant enough risk already as is. So to label a driver a bust solely off of injuries and especially freak accidents, it's totally unfair. Because of that, Park will always be one of the biggest what ifs in NASCAR history. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.